Good evening. Uh, within the last two years, the immigration issue as a federal issue has been at the forefront of the news. Yes. Mayor, yes. do you think without the publicity of immigration, both legal and illegal, in the uh, government, immigration would be such a dynamic issue within Danbury? Well, uh, thank you. I, thank you. I, I think that there's, um, you know, to answer that question, um, I, I think this issue is on, on people's minds. Um, and it's on people's minds in a national way. Um, it's on people's minds in a state way. Um, and it's on people that are not here uh, legally as well. I mean, they're waiting for action to be taken by the federal government. I think it was absurd that uh, our Congress adjourned before they took any meaningful action uh, related to immigration. They did decide and vote to build a wall. Uh, and uh, between the U.S. and Mexico, uh, approximately 25 Democrats joined the majority of Republicans uh, to spend about uh, $2 billion building a 700-mile fence. Uh, and then they broke for their um, midterm election cycle. So uh, I think that this is a, a comprehensive, difficult problem that requires uh, a many-faceted approach uh, in order for us to truly monitor, understand, and recognize and secure our borders, to have interior enforcement, and then to have a discussion about what to do with the 11 million people that are here already. Exactly. So um, there's a balance that has to be struck in there. And uh, yeah, no, I, I think this issue is on people's minds. It's certainly um, a, a hot button issue in many, many states, and not just border states anymore. And again, too, um this, this is a federal issue, and, and, and people need to put pressure on their um, elected yeah. officials. Yeah. You know, like for here, Nancy Johnson and um, Chris Dodd, Chris Joe, Dodd Lieberman, Joe Lieberman, the they other Congress people. Them because they're the one who actually can do something. Right. And, you know, in, in, in either way, you stand on the issue. I mean, right. you know, if, if you're somebody that um, feels very strongly about the rule of law and you want more enforcement, uh, you've got an election on November 3rd or 2nd or 4th, whatever date it is coming up. Uh, and you have an opportunity to vote for somebody. And I would take the time to find out where does Joe Lieberman stand on this issue? Exactly. Where does Ned Lamont stand on this issue? Where does Alan Schlesinger stand on this issue? Where, you know, um, and then make your vote. If that's where, where you want, that's where you're waiting the most of your vote, make your vote accordingly. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's they already here. I don't see any problem why we cannot issue them visas to work peacefully and also contribute back to their country because they send that money home. Mm. Okay? We have another call. Yeah. Too close to the TV, I think, or turn the TV down. Okay. <laughs> Caller, you're in the air. Hello? Okay, Caller, you're in the air. Okay. I want to keep going on that. Yeah, let's, okay. And again, um, I I'm reading from the Tribunal. Yep. This is a local Brazilian newspaper. It says here, um, well, like you said before, they are all experts yes. in what needs to be done yeah. for the country. It was refreshing to see the population of the country engage with such passion in the political process. You don't get to see that in America. No, I, 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 and, it, and it was one of the most fascinating things on my trip. Um, in Brazil, everybody has to vote. That's the law. Wow. If you don't vote, you're fined. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's a whole uh, host of penalties that comes there. So. What's interesting about that is that uh, I, the level of engagement by the average person on the street uh, was fascinating to me. Uh, every cab driver, every doorman, uh, every clerk had an opinion about politics. They, uh, at the time, the presidential election is still going on there, um, and there, there was uh, debates in the street about who people were going to vote for. Um, much different than what you see in the U.S. I mean, think of the city of Danbury. We have approximately 75,000 residents, but we only have about 35,000 registered voters. Yeah, that's true. So it uh, means that the minority is making the decision for the majority of people who live here. Um, and uh, the interesting thing about Brazil is that every person, from the cab driver all the way up to the, to the big politicians, followed politics, knew what was going on, had made their decision as to who they were going to vote for, mm -hmm. and they went and voted. Uh, it turned out when I was down there that Lula, the president, had a big scandal break when I was there, and they had a picture on the front page of their, of their major paper uh, with Lula next to uh, Richard Nixon, so sort of <laughs> implying that Lula was the new Richard Nixon. Um, you know, and interestingly enough, um, and you know, I... Funny, too, because they are educated about our politics <laughs> oh, yeah. here. And oh, how yeah. many of us know about them over there, oh, right? Yeah. That's, that's the good thing about foreigners, man. They really pay attention to what's going on in America. Interesting enough, a lot of people said to me, well, when you go down there, um, you know, wear a flag or wear a pin or whatever. Uh, let me tell you, when you go down there, many signs are in English and in Portuguese. 
uh, in Sao Paulo. Many uh, menus are in English and Portuguese. Many people are bilingual. Um, many people, there's a uh, fascination with American culture, so people are listening to American music. They're, you know, in the in the uh, elevators, and you're listening to American music. And um, our culture really spreads all over the world. That was the other thing that sort of struck me. Fascinating. Okay. Call your name. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for the mayor. Yeah. Uh, I just tuned in. I want to know if uh, his recent trip to Brazil did. Um, and I do congratulate him too on being a uh, a good mayor, and and we've made a lot of progress here. I think that uh, um, there's an issue too um, as far as um, immigration going into the city of Danbury. And I wonder if we saw any parallels when he visited Brazil compared to what we have here in Danbury. Um, in terms of um, yeah, in terms of customs and, and in terms of. Uh, uh, culture, sure. I mean, a a absolutely. I will tell you that Danbury is no longer the, the, the destination of choice for people applying for visas in our consulates down in Brazil. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia has now become the destination of choice. Um, but Danbury's not alone. Um, what the folks down there, and the focus of the meeting was to meet with all of the officers and all the consulates, and we had uh, we have missions in uh, Recife, Brasilia, Sao Paulo, and Rio. All of those uh, folks were there at this meeting, and um, they, you know, I said to them, my question was, well, where do you see people going when they apply for their visa? And uh, a lot of people uh, mentioned Elizabeth, New Jersey, as being a destination of choice, Somerville, Mass., Marlboro, Mass., Framingham, Mass., the greater Boston area. Um, and then what they've really seen an upsurge in is um, uh, as Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Um, now, there's some more paradoxes. Um, right. One of the paradoxes is as the Brazilian economy does better and as it continues to expand and there's a middle class that continues to grow, more people want to travel and go to Disney World. Disney World is the <laughs> number one destination of choice oh, for yeah. everybody who doesn't live in the U.S. So what happens is, and what's so difficult for those officers who work for the consulate, they have to make a decision. Is this person in front of me really going to Disney World for two weeks with their kids, or are they just sort of scamming the system and going to be intent on never coming back, overstaying their visa? Okay. And they have to make a, a difficult decision. They do a lot of investigatory work about somebody who just wants to go to Disney World. Uh, visa applications are, are up 80% at the consulates this year, primarily due to the uh, increasing strength of the, the rice, which is the uh, uh, currency. Uh, it's right. about two rice for every one dollar. Before it used to be three and four. So uh, Disney World and those kinds of trips have become more reachable for the average um, uh, Brazilian. Okay, let's let's just start talking about the Pacific of your trip. Yeah. One, can you please tell me? What was discussed at the conference? The conference was a fraud prevention conference. One of the things that we see um, in the issue of illegal immigration is that uh, most people perceive it as the border. Everybody crosses the border and crosses the border. The reality is that about 60% of the people who enter the country illegally do so by overstaying their visa. They get a visa to come as a student or you know, a six-month visa to, as a tourist, and they just never go back. We don't track people once they get here. So except when they leave the airport, they'll, uh, this is something new that Homeland Security has just put in about a year and a half ago. They have to uh, sign a form saying that I'm exiting the country now and, and here's my visa number and my passport number. We're also now taking fingerprints. There's new uh, biometric scanning that we're doing, which is n newly implemented about a year and a half ago. It's extremely difficult now to get a visa, first of all. Now, is this all across the border? Across the, across the world, okay, yeah. But they also do it in the European countries, too, they're right? doing, um, They're doing it in Europe. Um, some countries don't require a visa to enter um, okay. into the U.S., um, but they're also doing it uh, in a lot of the Middle Eastern countries, um, okay. which they call uh, 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 people who are applicants uh, of interest, they call them, the people they want to watch care. Um, so they really have, have cranked up watching people and watching what they're doing. And, and so this fraud prevention conference was all about folks that uh, basically go and they lie. They'll lie and say, I'm going to work for a business that doesn't exist. Or they'll lie and say, I'm going to work for a church that doesn't exist. And then they don't come back. And uh, in our consulates in Brazil, uh, many of the people who make that decision are Brazilian themselves. And they get, they're very frustrated by this. They're very angry about this because they see this 
brain drain of people leaving their country who have gotten educated and they want them to stay, they don't want them to leave. But what so. they do is stop the corruption and give them better right. jobs so they can stay. We've told them that. <laughs> so okay. That was part of my message. But the, the, the focus of the con conference was discussing uh, how do people sneak into the country. And it was fascinating. Um, everything from forged passports, stolen passports, forged visas, uh, people lie about their relationships and whatever. Um, and there was a lot of time for sharing information back. And then the reason I was there is they wanted to understand what is the impact of that person that that uh, arguably has snuck into the country or hasn't and um, so I talked a little bit about that we also had a presentation about the various immigration reform proposals okay. that are available that are, are being discussed in, 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 Cap in the Capitol Hill right now and then uh, we had a discussion about um, uh, some of the impacts of uh, folks that, that come here and, and that are here illegally so um, I think they found it rewarding I certainly found it fascinating now, what I have calls coming in, but I wanted to make sure that I get these yeah. questions. What did you tell them about Danbury? Well, one of the things I did um, is we had a we had a we really had a, a discussion about what are some of the positive things and what are some of the negative things. And um, again, using that figure of about sixty to sixty-five percent of all people get a visa don't go back. Um, we talked a little bit about what happens to a community when there's a dramatic shift in the demographics. And again, some of that's very positive and some of that can be uh, challenged because there's this clash of cultures that goes on. Um, for example, World Cup parades, people don't want Main Street shut down when Brazil wins a soccer uh, match. Um, so we have to talk about how we manage that and uh, what we would do in the future. Um, we didn't anticipate this year people would celebrate in the playoff games. We figured we'd have a celebration for the championship game, but we didn't think that every game, the playing games they call them, would result in a parade. Well, um, you know, for people that got to go to the doctor or got to go to the lawyer on Main Street or, 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 or see their business or bank, it was very frustrating. And, and I think folks have to understand that um, there's a way to celebrate and have a good time, but you right. can't do it at the expense of somebody else's right to travel up and down. should have sent it to Rogers Park and let them celebrate there. <laughs> if we had anticipated, that might have been a solution. But now, did, did you tell them about how in Danbury the Brazilian community is very powerful? They like very cohesive and yeah. yeah. We, we had a lot of discussions about that and about assimilation. What. Um, uh, there's a great report out there for those folks that are really interested. It's called the Jordan Report. It was written by Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, she, uh, before they did the immigration reform of 1996, they had a impaneled a commission by Congress as a, in lieu of doing the reform. She wrote this reform with a huge commission with a big budget, and it's right online. University of Texas has it online. But uh, Congresswoman Jordan talks a lot about uh, this idea of Americanization, which is uh, get people to learn English right away critical that you learn English when you come to the U.S. Uh, get people to become accustomed to our cultures and to our requirements, um, mm -hmm. to little things like zoning and land use regulations that don't exist in other countries. Um, get them to fit in as fast as possible. Um, and she really spends a lot of time on this. Um, and the term Americanization could be, for some of those multiculturalist people, might be very offensive. But let's understand that in this country, we are not united by ethnicity by religion, mm -hmm. by um, uh, blood, we're united by ideals. And those ideals are democracy and freedom and justice for all and opportunity. Those are what sh it makes us so special, that every American believes in those ideals. They don't believe in the same religions, they don't practice the same cultures, yeah. but yeah, we share that, all this stuff. It is stuff. that, but however, you know, what you see too, uh, you know, through history, is that um, um, some, 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 some ethnic groups, um, you know, had to had to fight oh, no you know, no, for those no, rights, no, no which, question. which should be yeah. automatically given to them. Right. But I got two calls. Okay, okay we'll take it. Caller, you're in the air. Hi, uh, Bill Swanson. Hi, Bill. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you, Mayor? Good, how are you? Um, I'd also like to point out to your uh, interviewer there that the... Sir? I think, Hello? I think we lost him. Caller, you're near. Hello? Caller? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I had one question because every Brazilian people come because every store, American people, give job for people who don't have papers. I don't understand because if you don't have papers, you don't work. But American people give work for people who don't have papers. Yeah, and that's and that's right, an issue, and, and, and that's one of the discussions we had. Um, 
If I could just jump in here, is that okay? Yeah, but I feel like this, this color was like making a mark at the whole thing. I mean, if you had a question, you don't have to come up with an accent. Uh, All right, but I, go ahead. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, let me just... Well, I can say that. <laughs> okay. I can say that. <laughs> let me just take a step back and say to you that um, when I came back from the trip, uh, the next day the paper said, you know, feds to descend on Danbury. And uh, sort of implying that um, there would be more raids right away or something like that. And what... Uh, the briefings that I received from ICE and from the federal authorities was part of this new program, Return to Sender, which was part of what the raids were that, that many folks saw a couple weeks ago, a major piece of this is workplace enforcement, what that caller was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's going off after the employers that are hiring people that they know to be illegally here. Um, that's where the, they're going to focus a lot of their resources on. Now, those cases are difficult to prosecute. They take one, two, three years to really pull them together. But there are companies who are on the internet that advertise worldwide that promise a visa for, with, in other words, you have to pay them a cash payment, say $10,000. You get a visa to come into the country to work a job that pays $7 an hour for six months. Well, if you work six months at $7 an hour, you can never pay off the 10000 that you paid for, to begin with. So what you do is, when you get here, you just take off. Take off, exactly. Right, you don't go work for the company. And the company doesn't care because they got their ten grand up front. That's true. So, That's there, true. so uh, those kinds of things, there's going to be a significant crackdown. And there are uh, several ongoing investigations of, of businesses in the greater Danbury area that have exploited people and that knowingly hire people that are here illegally. And, and there, there, there will be some resolution of those investigations over the next uh, 18 to 24 months. Okay. Now, um, about your trip, who financed your trip? Um, as I mentioned before, my wife paid for her uh, travel. Mm -hmm. um, the city of Danbury, I haven't submitted any reimbursements yet, but the, generally speaking, when I travel on business, the city of Danbury reimburses me, but I haven't submitted anything yet, so okay. it's out of my pocket now, right now. Now, who invited you to go to Brazil? Um, the U.S. Uh, consulate, the State Department of the United States of America. Okay. Um, wouldn't it be fair if they invited you for them, for the federal government to pay for your trip instead of having the city pay for it? Well, what they did is they paid the security and they paid for the transfers. They had uh, somebody waiting there uh, to pick me up at the airport, to take me to the hotel, mm -hmm. to, to move us around. So they uh, picked up, basically split the cost, split the cost with us. They don't really have a big budget for, the, for bringing speakers in and, and we obviously don't charge fees or anything like that. Right, but. Right. Um, we felt that that was fair, and I thought that there was some benefit for this for me to be there. Um, that there would be an o overarching benefit to the city to do that. Much like when I go to Washington to talk to senators or congressmen, right, right, right. Uh, to meet with uh, immigration, customs and enforcement people, homeland security people, to explain the challenges that we're facing and to look for ways in which to remedy that. I thought would benefit the city, and, and, and I don't have an issue with the city reimbursing me for that. But. Um, okay. Overall, when you look at the dollars, the cents, and the potential cost-benefit here, um, figuring that every child that's here illegally uh, costs us about $9,000, and the trip probably costs us about 1500 bucks. if I can prohibit, prevent one person from committing fraud and coming to the country illegally, we pretty much have made back our money okay. uh, significantly. Okay. Caller, you're near. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, this week in the News Times, there was an article uh, with Councilman Seabury. He took a bold step in addressing the issue of illegal immigration. Would you like to comment on this? Well, Thank you. I think that the councilman has, um, who is running for state representative, has articulated some of his concerns uh, relating to this issue. He's laid out a, a five-point plan. I will say that states across the country are becoming involved in this issue, and that's mainly because the federal government has not done its job. So places like Colorado and Georgia and North Carolina and South Carolina and other places throughout the country have had to fill in the, the gap there and do the job of the federal government. Um, but what you're seeing, and again, one of the briefings I had was that there are strategic partnerships that, that, that people at Homeland Security want to develop between the federal, state, and local governments um, to try to put together uh, a comprehensive approach to the problem. So certainly the, the, the councilman uh, uh, putting that together and putting that on the table for discussion in, in the legislature is, is a healthy thing and there should be debate and discussion about that. Now, this comprehensive plan, you were actually the only elected official to attend this conference. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I hear? No, <laughs> no, no. I can tell you what How? they're telling me is going to happen. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you, you want to tell us? Sure. 
Go ahead. Sure. Um, they're pretty uh, adamant, uh, and they're very upset about this, and I'll explain why in a minute, that after the November elections in the lame duck session of Congress, there will be a uh, guest worker program or a temporary worker program implemented. Um, I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I was... When? Um, that would be no well I'm, uh, the effective date generally for federal law is October um, so they'll uh, you're hearing this first when ideas yeah, are working yeah, this beyond. Is, this is big news and, and I'm gonna <laughs> tell you news for us. I'm gonna tell you why the consulate officials are so upset because they know that when the federal government retools a program they never provide any more resources and in order for them to be able they're already inundated with an 80 percent increase in visas now they're talking about doing a temporary worker program matching a willing employer with a willing worker um, they're just Parent, you know, they're just flabbergasted that they're going to just layer the, another whole program, more work, and they can't keep up with the applications that they have right now. So, um, you know, I'm not necessarily on board with the provisions of this temporary worker program. Well, um, why not? Be because early on, because temporary, you were advocating. Well, no, I never advocated a temporary worker program. What you were I, advocating for visas. What, for what I, no, what I, advocate, what I advocate for is a path to legalization for folks that are, have already been here with certain steps that have been met. But you can't even talk about those folks that are here until you secure the borders and demonstrate an ability to do that and then demonstrate an ability to enforce our laws. So those two things have to happen first. So a phased approach to that, three years of securing the borders. Okay, we've built a fence, we've done this, we've mm -hmm. done that, we've deployed all kinds of new technology. The second three years, we're going to go after the employers that knowingly hire folks that are here who are undocumented. And then maybe the third year, say, okay, what do we do with everybody that's here? Obviously. It's going to take us 60 years to deport 11 million people. That's not practical. Okay. Let's come but, up with some kind okay. of solution. Good. In the meantime, but in the here's meantime. what I don't like about a temporary worker program. A temporary worker program implies that it's temporary. And the reality is, is that you're going to get people here, and you're going to say you can only stay here five years. And by the way, if you're here, don't meet anybody and fall in love. Because if you have a kid, you're going to have to go back. And we don't want to split up families and relationships. It cre it'll create uh, even more of a, um, a disaster of having people rush over to the country before we're prepared to handle it and I think that's there's there's a challenge there and, and whether you call it temporary worker or guest worker I'm very much opposed to that but in the meantime, I'm opposed can, to amnesty too but in ahead. the meantime while they're doing this you, you're talking about phase one yeah phase two and phase people are gonna have to wait right. okay while people are waiting in America can we just put a hold on the arrest or are well, you going to continue to do the Well, the I, I mean, I really can't. I'm not going to comment on, on federal government's investigatory okay. tactics and what they do and what they don't do. I will tell you that they're going to have to do arrests because they have to send the message that it's not good to be here illegally. It's a bad thing. Okay. Um, doesn't mean they're bad people, but, but it's not good. And it, you got to be careful because whether it's a car accident or something with taxes or something, you're going to get ensnared in the system if you're not documented at some point in your life. So let's best to get this resolved as fast as possible. And let me just say this, and I, I know we're running out of time here, but even plans like McCain-Kennedy, mm -hmm. and I, I actually talked to Senator McCain before I left personally one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, you realize, Senator, that under your plan, and you may not even know this either, Ivan, if it's passed and adopted by the President, about 4,000 people in Danbury alone would have to be deported. Yeah. That's with a guest worker program. Okay. Because anybody here that's been two years or less has to leave the country immediately. Okay. Those 11 people that were picked up in the sweep, none of them were here more than two years. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not as simple as people think. I mean, there's going to have to be a political will to enforce these laws. Okay, I want to put... Yeah, sorry. I, I want to throw in two questions. Go ahead. One is that... People are also saying, you know, um, why arrest the illegal immigrants? Why not go after those who are hiring them? Yeah. I don't hear anybody advocating. Oh, for well, I think ICE, ICE is saying that. They're saying that we're going to, that that's going to be a major focus of because, what they do. Um, if if they actually arrested some of the employers, yes, you know, they would discourage. A, yeah, absolutely, no question about so, it. So 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 like that, it's like. They focusing, and then the second. You're going to see some arrests in that area. Okay. That I can tell you. Okay, and then the second thing is this: um, you were the only elected official in Brazil. What does that say to your future as a whole? Because you, you know, you're traveling the world, you're traveling across America. Uh, you know, what I does don't that say for your future as a whole. I don't think it says anything except uh, uh, this is a complicated issue, and it's an issue that people are very passionate about on both sides. And I, I, let me just say that you cannot discount the folks out there who are opposed to illegal immigration, and you can't simply dismiss them and say they're racist because that's not fair. Conversely, you can't 
uh, discount the advocates who maybe want a path to legalization or a path to citizenship. Um, th that's not necessarily fair either. I think if we're going to have consensus in this country, it has to be built in the middle. But I also understand, I also don't think that that the, the debate, the discussion locally about the illegal immigrants is fair because I mean when you have people holding signs telling them go home or die, it, it's, it's like you have no respect for you know for human yeah. dignity. You know, I, I mean it, it's I understand but, I understand I, I hear their, their, you know their right. um, views their also, right to their view, right? Right and, and I they also have to understand that these people are human too and this is a very healthy debate and, and to be holding signs and, and, and they're talking yeah. about yeah. where they should go and they should and they should die and you know it, to me that's that's unchristian like that's un-american well i think yeah, look i think that's terrible and i certainly would, wouldn't condone anybody holding a sign like that but let me just say is it any better for an advocate to say uh, to call me a racist or to say that somebody no. who's opposed to is a no. racist and, and use horrible terms to describe them or to put on their blog horrible terms that are totally untrue and to viciously attack somebody because of their views. So both sides on this debate are guilty of that kind of conduct and it's not appropriate and both of those in groups have to be marginalized. You have to say okay. you can't be part okay. of the discussion because you're not rational okay. and we want to deal right. with this in a very efficient and pragmatic okay. way. Okay, let me say this. I'm not taking any more calls, but, but <laughs> I, what, what I would like to say is whether I agree with you or not, I would like to say that you have the courage to do what you do. Thanks, sir. Okay, Thank and, and um, I appreciate your strength. And you know, and either way you look at it. Next, bye bye. Next week we're going to be discussing education nationally and locally. So th you definitely want to tune into that conversation because we're going to have one of the most educated black men here in Danbury to come and discuss this. All right. Thank you very much. Don't forget to visit my blog. Bye bye. Thank you.